unclear on his ultimate intentions in terms of getting the vaccination required by New York. Here's James Harden. I want him to be on the team, of course. Our, our, he's, he's been a huge part of, um, since I've been here, a huge part of you know our success, the success that we did have last year. And we kind of was finding a rhythm to whereas, you know, uh, that chemistry that we built, you know, especially I, I can remember last year, that one road trip we had, we were just, you know, me and Kyrie, and he's just a special talent that you don't really see often. Um, so, of course, you know, I would want him to be on the team, and, um, you know, he's one of the reasons why I came here. Okay, so Kyrie not playing against Milwaukee tonight. By the way, yesterday Los Angeles became the third NBA city to pass a sweeping COVID-19 vaccine mandate. Jay Williams here with us. Jay mm. Will, always good to see you, sir. Hello, we'll get Molly. to you in uh, just a second. Um, Stephen A., what impact could Kyrie have on the Nets moving forward? Well, he can decimate their franchise. Um, let me be very, very clear with what I'm saying. James Harden can sign an extension. He's got a player option after this season that will pay him $47 million. Okay. He can opt in and then add about three years and $161 million to that. Well, what did Malika Andrews report the other day? <clears throat> she talked about how James Harden uh, alluded to, I believe it was Malika Andrews, if I'm wrong about that, my apologies, but I believe it was her, uh, basically reporting that James Harden talked about how he's never tested free agency. He's never actually been a free agent out there. He'd like to see what options are available to him. And here's the thing that we have to pay attention to. This is the same James Harden that turned down a two-year, $103 million extension from the Houston Rockets, he left money on the table so he could go somewhere that he wanted to go. Mm -hmm. So don't think for one second that James Harden likes the nonsense that's going on in Brooklyn. We've been so busy talking about Kevin Durant. We forgot what a superstar James Harden is. Last year was an aberration. He wanted out of Houston. They initially said no. He came into camp out of shape, all right, because he was letting them know he ain't trying to play for them that upcoming season. And as a result, they ultimately moved him. And remember, at the 11th hour, as Jay Williams can attest to, at the 11th hour, Molly, there, were, there, were, there was noise that the Philadelphia 76ers were about to grab James Hart. Yeah. He was about to head to Philadelphia. Brooklyn recognized that, stepped right in at the 11th hour because KD and I was like, what, what you doing? Get this, brother. And Sean Marks went out there, and he got James Harden. Mm -hmm. We got to remember this dude is a superstar. He's a multiple-time scoring champion. He's one of the elite offensive players this game has ever seen. And to be quite honest with you, Kevin Durant isn't the only one that deserves better. James Harden deserves better. he wants better. a ring. James Harden deserves better than the nonsense Kyrie Irving is putting this franchise through. So when James Harden speaks up and he says, look, I have never been a free agent before. We all know what Philly's doing. Philly would like Ben Simmons back, okay? But if Ben Simmons wants to be there, the first order of business is for him to get back so he can elevate his trade value and they can move him for equitable compensation. You think Daryl Morey doesn't want James Harden in Philadelphia? You think Doc Rivers wouldn't want James Harden in Philadelphia with Joel and B? You, you're kidding me? Once upon a time, they got a call last year, okay? The Houston Rockets thought, you know, they were about to do a deal that was going to send Ben Simmons to Houston so James Harden could come to Philadelphia. But ultimately, Brooklyn stepped in, and that was where James Harden wanted to go. He's giving indications now that might not be the case if all of this nonsense continues. So when Kyrie Irving sits back, clearly thinking about himself and his quote-unquote principled positions, he's compromising the franchise because Kevin Durant is a baller. James Harden is a baller. They don't want all of this other stuff. They want to hoop. And I'm hearing, as of last night, at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I was on the phone with some people, Jay, and I was told, yo, Kevin Durant, don't think for one second that Kevin Durant won't eventually give Brooklyn the okay to move uh -huh. this brother if it continues to be on the path that it is. Don't think he's so married to Kyrie Irving that he's just going to tolerate all of this other stuff. Hell, before they landed in Brooklyn, Kyrie wasn't speaking to anybody, including Kevin Durant. Okay, DeAndre Jordan had to get on the phone and speak like, what the hell are we doing here? What's up? I thought we were coming to Brooklyn. All right, because Kyrie had went down under. Not, li not literally to Australia. I'm talking about he went, on, he went down low. He was no, like, yo, I don't want to talk you. to anybody. Okay, so we got to pay attention to what's going on. There's some stuff percolating in Brooklyn, and if Kyrie don't get back, all hell might break loose.
That's what I'm saying. Jay, the floor is yours. No, S.A., I'm with you. And if I'm Joe Sy, if I'm Sean Marks, there's no way in hell I'm letting James Harden get to Philadelphia, who's in the East, and actually is the perfect pairing for Joel Embiid. Think about, man, that, that's just scary to even think about what that team could be. That's why, look, the game of basketball is very similar to House of Cards, right? And this is politics when it comes down to it at the end of the day. And Stephen A., when we first talked about Kyrie Irving, I said, to what degree is Joe Sy willing to go to in order to see if he can get Kyrie Irving to stay, right? Is there a way he can find an exemption? This is how you do it. House of Cards. Hear me out, Stephen A. I got you. Eric Adams has a chance to become the mayor of New York. Aaron, Eric Adams is the first African-American borough president from Brooklyn, okay? He has a great relationship with Josiah and the Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets have reinvested millions of dollars back into the borough of Brooklyn. There's a lot more Josiah, one of the founders of Alibaba, could do for the city of New York. Now, the election is November 2nd. If Eric Adams goes into office, he will be able to become active January 1st. That relationship is something that if you're Joe Tsai, with the pool that he has economically and politically for what he could do for Eric Adams in the future, you have to venture into that relationship and say, how can we work out something? Can I reinvest more money into the city of, Brook into the city of Manhattan, into the borough of Brooklyn? What do you need that I can help you with to potentially see if I could get an exemption for Kyrie Irving to play in Brooklyn? I'm only saying, look, I, I know Kevin Durant, eventually through time, if Kyrie can't play, might have to move on. But before I, before I explore a trade, I see what happens with that relationship with Eric Adams, and I see if there's a chance that I can find a way to create some kind of exemption for Kyrie to play in the borough of Brooklyn. Here's my response to you on that, and I appreciate mm -hmm. the intel, and I'm not challenging the intel at all. Let me be very, very clear about that. What you said just now, I'm taking as gospel. My response to it is, what do I do if I'm Brooklyn? Hell no. I'm not playing that chip to keep a Kyrie Irving. I'd do it to keep Kevin Durant, if, that was, if, if that's what it took. I, if Kevin Durant was in that situation, I'd do it for okay. him. Okay? Right. I'd do it for the combination of Kevin mm -hmm. Durant and James Harden, but I would never do that for Kyrie Irving. And do you okay, know why? That's, that's, and do, and well, do you so know why I wouldn't do that for me, Kyrie Irving? What's the trade value? What's the trade value for Kyrie Irving? If you know, if you're opposing team, if right. you know that hey, I'm not, I'm not sure that this person is of the stable mind that mm -hmm. he can create value for my franchise, you tell me what the trade value for Kyrie is. Oh no, 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 it's minimal. I can tell you that for a fact because I was on the phone with at least four GMs over the last two days, all saying when the Sixers are concerned about 20 cents on the dollar for Ben Simmons, what do you think Brooklyn is concerned about for Kyrie Irving? Everybody knows he's spectacular, that he's box office, that he is big time when he wants to play. But the question is, does he really want to play? He's so distracted and so mm -hmm. focused on other things outside of basketball that right now, league-wide, nobody trusts him. I have one executive that tell me he wouldn't be surprised if Sean Marks could get, if he could, that he'd give Kyrie Irving away for a box of cookies. That's what the hell he said. Literally, I'm quoting, because that's how crazy Kyrie Irving appears at this particular moment in time in terms of being all over the place instead of focused on the game of basketball. So if you're the Brooklyn Nets right now, here you got a situation. 